first ever trilateral summit at Camp David under President Joe Biden. The American President Joe Biden is in fact hosting his South Korean counterpart Yoon suk yeol and the Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida at the presidential retreat. The summit comes amidst heightened concerns over China in the Indo-Pacific and also the persistent provocative behavior by North Korea in the region. The China is keeping a tab on this summit just a day ahead of the summit and the Russian and the Chinese warships were spotted near the Japanese islands while they did not enter into Japan's territorial waters. During the summit at Camp David, the United States, Japan and South Korea are expected to launch a series of joint initiatives on defense and technology. The three leaders will also set up a three-way crisis management hotline and they are expected to discuss their shared concerns on China and North Korea. Now, the summit is the first that Biden has held during his presidency at Camp David and it comes amidst a thaw in the historically complicated relationship between Japan and South Korea. Japan, remember, had colonized the Korean Peninsula from 1910 till 1945. Uh, to give us more perspective in terms of what, of course, is expected to happen at this summit, we're being joined by Voice of America's correspondent Jessica Stone, who's joining us live from Washington, D.C. Now, Jessica, this happens to be the first standalone summit that these leaders have held. They're focused on a trilateral approach to security and prosperity in the region. Now, what is the significance of this approach and why is this summit being held at Camp David? Well, this could not have happened without a number of steps uh, on all parties. Uh, the Biden administration came into office. It reinstituted a trilateral cooperation. Uh, it invited Fumio Kishida as well as President Yoon suk yeol to the White House as the first two foreign leaders to visit the White House. And it sent Secretary of State Blinken and Secretary of Defense Austin to the region in tandem uh, to uh, begin to rebuild the alliances that had been frayed under the Trump administration. Uh, and so all of that leads us uh, to uh, today where we uh, are going to see these three leaders announce, as you mentioned, a host of uh, agreements. Uh, and I want to draw your attention to some of the security agreements in particular. Uh, one of the most important things that they're going to announce is called duty to consult. This means that one threat against one of these three partners uh, would mean that all three of them immediately hop on a hotline that they're in the process of uh, putting together. They coordinate their response uh, on the policy level and they act in unison and in coordination. Uh, this is going to be key for any contingencies with respect to North Korea or, as you mentioned, with respect to China and the Taiwan Straits and the South China Sea or elsewhere. Um, and the White House is also looking for uh, using the trilateral group to uh, com to work on issues around the Pacific Islands, uh, ASEAN, um, uh, AUKUS, uh, the Quad. Uh, there are a number of uh, ways that they're hoping to uh, work through the trilateral summit. Uh, and uh, also, um, it's worth noting that they will be making some economic uh, announcements as well in relation to supply chain resilience, because, of course, we've all seen the right. vulnerabilities of the current system uh, with respect to how China handled the pandemic. Absolutely indeed. Now, another very important and a key issue here is how the three nations want to work together in combating a nuclear North Korea. So what's the reaction to this summit in Pyongyang? So Pyongyang uh, has threatened, uh, according to reports, to launch another ICBM missile uh, in protest of this. Uh, Beijing as well uh, calling this uh, an effort to return to a Cold War mentality. Uh, part of the expected outcomes of this summit is that the U.S., uh, South Korea and Japan would more closely coordinate on nuclear uh, advancements in uh, North Korea's nuclear program and nuclear testing uh, and any movements that they make uh, with respect to that program uh, and be able to potentially deter it more quickly, uh, much less respond. Uh, right. This is an expansion of the nuclear consultative group that was announced over the summer. Uh, and you'll recall that that's when Washington sent a nuclear armed uh, nuclear submarine to Busan, South Korea, in, in an effort to uh, really put a, uh, a bow on that uh, effort to deter North Korea going forward. Clearly, it has not worked. Absolutely, indeed. And my final quick question to you, Jessica, is this now uh, China is, of course, dubbed this summit as a mini NATO style trilateral alliance. And also what's interesting is that the fact that you mentioned that there is going to be this trilateral hotline to discuss and to take forward any kind of a contingency which could in fact emerge in that particular specific region. 
Is that how the United States also sees this as some kind of a mini NATO in the East? Well, I think that the, the White House would definitely push back and has pushed back on that characterization. They do not uh, believe this is a mini NATO. Uh, it is not even a mutual defense pact. The United States has separate agreements with Japan and with South Korea. But what they're looking for is increased cooperation between the three militaries, interoperability on radar, satellite, uh, weapon systems, in order to respond together. Because, of course, the United States has been through 20 years of wars uh, that have not really been unilateral, but, but for which the U.S. soldier has certainly uh, shouldered a significant amount of the burden. They're looking to partner in the Pacific region uh, with right. the countries closest to some of these hot spots, and in particular the Taiwan Strait. So that's what uh, the White House would say in response to that. And, and keep in mind, they're increasing their engagement with China in parallel. So we're going to see Wang Yi, the foreign minister of China, come to the United States next month. He's going to be at the UNGA. He's also invited to be here in Washington ahead of that. Uh, and so they are going to have plenty of opportunities to tell China what it is and what it isn't, this trilateral framework that they're initiating today. All right. Very interesting. Thank you very much indeed, Jessica Stone, for joining us and getting us all those details there. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.